Hey YouTube, it's Fred here from Hillian's Bricks and in today's video it's going to be slightly different from the usual. So uh, my name is Fred as I mentioned and I run a Lego YouTube channel for now almost, uh, yeah just over a year now, a year and a half almost. And uh, yeah, time does fly. And in today's video I'm going to be like sharing my experiences and my top 10s in terms of you know running a YouTube channel, you know the things that I've learned and maybe that will help other people as well who are looking to, to grow their channel now. By all means, I'm not an expert, you know, I'm not a Mr. Beast of uh, YouTube or anything like that, but I just wanted to share my experiences and the kind of 10 things that I've learned out of it that might be useful as well, you know, to help develop your YouTube channels if you've got one or if you're looking to create one. So uh, without further ado, shall we get started, right? So let's get going. Right, so my first tip is quite clear, is you need to have a topic that you're going to talk about and that you can create plenty of content about. So for me, as I mentioned already, I talk about Lego and Lego is my passion, it's my hobby. So it is easy for me to talk about Lego and, you know, discuss it. Uh, it's something that, you know, is forever ongoing, forever changing. There's lots of Lego YouTubers out there already. But there's also, you know, continuous development of new products and new ways of creating content. So that would be my first piece of advice is make sure you pick a topic that you know enough about and you can create enough content about as well. And you can find angles to create uh, good content related to that. So make sure you pick the topic, but most importantly, make sure you're passionate about it as well, because there's no worse thing than creating something and then you feel like it's becoming a burden to create YouTube videos. Like for me, I enjoy creating YouTube videos because I'm passionate, it's my hobby. So uh, it, it is an easy thing to do. So make sure that uh, you're not gonna get bored uh, creating content after a while because that's not what you want to, to get into. Right, so number two, um, the other piece of advice, second piece of advice I want to give is you have to do it for the right reasons. And by that, I mean, is you want to make sure that you provide great content, you know, that your users are going to want to watch and are going to want to watch more of it in the future. So you just want to make sure that you do not get just obsessed with, you know, with the, the subscriber count and, you know, how many views you are. And you don't want to just set it the goal of just getting monetized, right? Because if you're just purely focusing on that, you're, you're missing the bigger picture. So if you're doing all the fundamentals right and you're providing the right content and everything, the subscribers and the views will follow. So if you focus on those fundamentals, the others will just stay. And I know when I started, you know, you just look at the subscriber, oh, we got another subscriber. You, you kind of, you don't want to get obsessed about it because it's easy just to get distracted by it. Just make sure that you're just doing it for the right reasons. And remember like, people are only going to watch it if um, you provide great content, right? So that's the fundamental uh, piece of advice I want to give you as my second piece of advice. Now for number three, it is again, you know, as I mentioned, I have a Lego YouTube channel. And as I said already, there are lots of Lego YouTube creators. So the third point I want to mention is you got to find your angle or your niche in this arena that you're talking about that people will want to come to you for, uh, for the content. Because for my example, like I don't need to go and start creating content about new sets that are coming out or a Lego leaks. There are like literally hundreds, if not thousands of Lego YouTubers who are going to be creating that sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, from my perspective, I've kind of also tied it to my background in my professional life. I, I'm a procurement manager. I enjoy looking for deals, finding, you know, great savings. And for me, I decided to focus a lot on, you know, finding good deals so people can actually save money and buy Lego at good value. And then also providing some input in terms of you know how I manage you know the Lego investing side and things like that yes there are other youtubers out there that do that as well but you're starting to create a more specific uh, focus area that you're going to be good at so I acknowledge that there's lots of other youtubers who are much better than me and you know talking about Lego sets and things and you can still talk about those but you've got to realize that this is probably not why people are coming to you for it so make sure that you realize what do people like about your channel and why do they keep coming back, right? So, uh, and then focus on that and make sure that you can create that unique experience for your viewers so that they create that need to come back to watching more videos. And as well know, we'll subscribe to your channel. So the fourth point that I want to talk about is that you don't have to be a perfectionist 
uh, when you start off at YouTube, right? So, uh, you know, there's lots of times where you'll just get bogged down and trying to create the perfect video and waste tons of time trying to do it. And I think you got to learn through doing, and that becomes down to like recording the video clips, you know, being aware of the camera positions, the sound and everything like this, the lighting, um, but also, you know, the editing. So, but you learn through doing and, you know, your audience will be quite forgiving, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know that most of them realize that this is kind of just a hobby and as long as the content again is good and you will see progression when you start looking back at some of your earlier videos and you see where you kind of get to after six and 12 months and you see that progression you're learning the editing skills you start to incorporate new things and and you do do things by trial and error right like from my example i'm i'm still pretty rubbish i would say at creating thumbnails but i'm trying to find new ways and i learn everything to do things better as you go along don't let it uh, stop you from creating content or not publishing a video if you think that it's not the perfect video like we I, i'm not a professional at creating content but it's something that i enjoy doing as well and you learn and you progress as you go along so that's the kind of like the fourth point that i want to cover right so we're already halfway through the list of things that i want to talk about so in fifth position and i think this is probably one it's probably kind of goes under the radar for most people but i think it's fundamentally important when you're a youtuber and it is to be authentic you just got to be yourself and but that i mean is like you know don't pretend to be someone you're not or just create content that's just kind of like sensational yes there's people that lie that but if you're yourself and people can associate with you people are going to come back and they kind of like build that trust relationship, right? So it's like, could I be that guy's friend? You know, is that the sort of person that I would want to talk to if I met him in, in, on the street and things like that? So if you're authentic and you uh, come across authentic on, on camera, I think people are going to associate themselves more with you and will want to come back and see you again. And, you know, you have that good feel when you see someone talk or create videos and you just want to make sure that you have that uh, sense that people feel that, you know, they're relatable and you know this could be someone that I, someone that I know and someone that I want to talk to so uh, I think it's often undervalued but I think it's it's quite important so for me that's definitely one that I wanted to highlight and that's what my number five is and then number six it's about uh, again your content and the recurrence of the content so you want to start creating content where you can have recurring videos on the same theme same topic um and from from my perspective i can give you examples is that i give a monthly video on top 10 lego sets by value so that's something that i can create every month and every month my users will expect that and they will see what that top 10 is and the, the evolution of it so that's something that people will come back to same as like on a weekly basis i have live streams when i talk about uh it's called lego like friday lego deals so every friday sometimes it's Saturday, people will expect to see those live streams and find out, you know, what deals they can be found. So you're creating that sort of continuity and people can expect it every week to be there. People will come back and kind of anticipate and get ready for the next week's session already and then they'll come back. So, you know, I've also, for example, I do monthly giveaway competitions. So people start to expect that as well. The, the main thing that if people start to expect that, make sure that you do follow up with that because that's very important. You know, once you create that consistency and people can know when to expect that regular content, people will keep coming back and you give them a reason to subscribe because there's no worse than you start watching a, a new YouTube channel. You subscribe and you see a video you like, you subscribe and then nothing happens for two months and then suddenly another video appears and, you know, you need that consistent upload and consistent content to kind of create the people's need to watch your videos and want to watch your videos right so make sure that you have a consistent approach when every time you upload something and the recurrence is quite regular at least i would say you know once or twice a week if you can so people will then really keep looking forward to those sort of uh, videos that you create now point seven uh, I briefly touched upon it already is very much related to my channel and it's, uh, it's a personal choice that I put on in terms of helping to develop my channel and I've seen it's been quite you know successful and it helps to drive a lot of attention of people to subscribe and it's giveaways now I create monthly giveaway competitions for Lego so I give away Lego sets and I see whenever I create those videos on how people to enter 
people will start to get drawn more to your channel and they will likely subscribe because they have an interest because they can win something. Now, if you do giveaways, you got to be very clear with the instructions, be you know, upfront and transparent in terms of how people win, what they need to do, the instructions. And you can be you can be very clever with the way you do the instructions, right? You can actually help that to drive your channel. As for example, you can ask them to add a comment in the video, you know, like the video, things like that, that will all put more exposure to help you grow your channel. Or for example, I have a Discord channel and I wanted to grow that one month in particular. I ask people to enter a comment on my Discord channel. So then people have to go for free onto my channel and they will get that uh, content. So you can actually help to drive the areas that you want to help to grow. Um, and yes, you got to, one thing you do have to expect is that you, you will sometimes get those comments. Oh, this is a scam. This is not real. Uh, but that's one you have that, um, you need to build that transparency and need to be honest and you can help your users as well when they win the prize and they receive the prize that they take pictures and you can share that as well. So that kind of whole helps to build your authenticity that I talked about earlier and you build that trust relationship with your audience as well. So I found giveaways particularly, you know, useful to help grow the channel. Yeah, it does come at a cost, but if you find clever ways around it, you can help to grow that channel and you would like to think over time it could pay for itself. So um, that's one thing that where you can actually help grow your channel, but make sure that the giveaways are kind of relatable to the topic of your channel as well. So there's no point giving away uh, some other sort of thing when it's not completely related to the, the topic of your channel. So yeah, that's number seven. Now let's go on to number eight and number eight is about marketing. So there's do's and don'ts here that I can give you advice from. It's like you will, in the beginning, you might want to just grow your user base and get subscribers. The one thing you don't want to do is go on websites like Fiverr and see where people say, oh, I promise you like a hundred subscribers, you know, within 24 hours uh, for like 10 pounds or whatever it be, $10. You know, those guys are just creating bots and they just come. Yes, you will see the 100 subscribers come onto your vid onto your channel and then within 24 or 48 hours when YouTube has reviewed, reviewed it, they'll all be gone again. So those are not really the way of growing your channel. Um, the one way if you're thinking about marketing, some things that I have found useful is like you want to interact with your other social media channels. So I didn't really talk about that. You should also create other social media profiles like Facebook, for example, or Twitter. You can do all those sort of things, Instagram. And, and then maybe advertise through those channels. But one thing I found particularly useful for my channel is that on a monthly basis, I spend a little bit of money on um, Google ads. And what I put on Google ads is actually video ads. So, and more recently, because I know my giveaways tend to be the thing that draws people to my channel, I put the giveaway competition video that I create every month as a small advert um, on other YouTube channels. And actually when you use Google ads, there are ways to really target it down. So I make sure that every month those videos appear on other big Lego YouTube channels. And you know, people will then actually, you can actually also choose a geography of where people are located based on your language or, or whatever reason. And then it can help to, you're already targeting the right audience that relates to your channel to see those adverts and then they're more likely to come into your channel now. So for example, it costs between three to four cents or pence per, per view. So you can get 25 to 30 people come into your channel for like one pound, for example, and maybe, you know, 10% of those will sign up. So as a subscriber, so you'll get two, three subscribers, maybe for a pound and that could grow. So if you put a small budget aside and it's something that you're willing to do, that's one way of, I think, growing your channel as well in a sustainable way and in it's kind of like targeting the right audience and you have people that are going to watch your content rather than just widely putting it out there uh that's the kind of advice i want to give you in terms of targeting from a, a marketing perspective if you're looking to consider that now we're already at number nine and at number nine uh is about connecting with your audience so um and there's multiple ways of doing that. So there is, uh, you know, you can respond to comments, you know, or maybe you create other social media platforms, like I said, like on Facebook and Twitter, you know, Instagram, you can connect with your audience in multiple ways. Like on my channel, we have a Discord server that we recently created and we found that it's really driving a lot of interaction. You know, people come back and you can actually also promote on there 
when your next YouTube video comes out. And, you know, if you create that whole interactive experience for your users and that, that regular connect, even when you're not online or when you're not even streaming or when you're not even posting videos, the people will still feel that engagement and association with your channel. And whenever you then post a video, they will watch it and come back uh, for more. So I think it's very important to build that, that connection with your audience. Again, as long as you're authentic and everything, people will come and people will then want to be connected and be part of the, you know, your community. Because the way I look at YouTube channels, and this is perhaps where some people are going wrong, I see a YouTube channel as a community building exercise. You know, the people that are subscribed to my channel, they're almost like part of my family. You know, this is a community we're building on the topic of, of my case, Lego. And we're all Lego fans and we all talk about Lego and this is the community that we're building. So that's kind of like my ninth piece of advice. Make sure that you connect with your audience. So we're already at number 10. And the number 10 topic that I want to talk about is live streaming. And I think it's, it's quite important to do live streams. When I first started my YouTube channel, most of my, well, all of my videos were pre-recorded and I didn't really do any live stream because I never really knew what to expect or how to interact. And I didn't feel like I was going to be able to, you know, fill the gap of noise kind of thing. Like you have to fill however long uh, you're doing your YouTube video for or your YouTube stream and you can't edit it, right? Because you're, you're kind of live, so you have to be on the go. So I would say eventually I kind of jumped into it and I really quickly saw the benefits of doing live streams. So first of all, you're going to get that more engagement. You also have that direct interaction with with your um, with your viewers through like the comments and things like that. So it kind of ticks the box of the comments that I previously mentioned. You know, you can help to be authentic. You can also, you know, make sure you bring new content on, on a regular basis and you have that direct uh, interaction with your uh, customer base. Of, well, viewer base, not customer, sorry. Um, one thing I've also learned is like when you are on a live stream, it's also more likely, depending on the length of the live stream as well, but a lot of live streams tend to appear on like the dashboards or things like if you're watching YouTube channels, for example, on, on Lego, sometimes I see on my things pop up people live streaming, people I've never even watched before. And I feel that the YouTube algorithm works in a way that it's also encouraging to watch YouTube live streams a lot more potentially on the same topic. So I've seen a lot of times when I started live streams, uh, I get new people coming in and like they kind of like check out what's your channel about, what you're talking about. And then you will also see that you, it's a good way of generating new subscribers. Um, but the one thing also you'll see is that all these live streams are typically much longer than your uploaded videos. And that's why I think also YouTube are promoting that sort of thing. Now, if you're monetized, there's other ways of generating revenue that way. My channel isn't monetized yet, but I'm, you know, optimistic that will happen at some point. As I said earlier in this video, it's not something I'm actively chasing. If you provide a good content, it will come inevitably. But also what I found is that when you do uh, live streams, it really helps you boost your watch hours because uh, you might have, you know, five people watching you do a long live stream and they watch the whole live stream. It really boosts um, your watch hours. And that's kind of like, how I found that our uh, live streams are very useful. So yeah, there you have it. That's my top 10 pieces of advice of running uh, you know, a YouTube channel. As I said in the beginning of this video, it is still an ongoing learning process. I am no expert by any means, but I thought I'd share my experiences. Let us know what you think of this video. Is this sort of thing that you can relate to? Has this given you any ideas of um, for developing your YouTube channel or are, are you actually thinking about starting a YouTube channel? So let me know in the comment section below because I'm always interested in reading your comments. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that red button and then we'll see you again for another video in the future. That's it for me. Bye for now.